my name is Ellen, I'm a junior, and I was just wondering what your favorite part of writing is, or what your favorite part of being a journalist is. I hate writing. <laughs> <laughs> I love reporting. My favorite part is the reporting. When you're actually somewhere cool that you never thought you'd actually talking to somebody who's bringing a completely different perspective on something than you ever could have imagined. Um, that's the cool part. I mean, because of journalism, I've seen the world. I've been able to travel. I've been to Cambodia and hung out in garment factories with these textile workers. I was in Madagascar at an underwear factory with, you know, these uh, women who were making stuff for Victoria's Secret. <laughs> um, I've been all over and talked to people, to the Congo, to talk to victims of sexual violence, where as depressing as it is, it's also incredible to see the kind of strength that it takes to, uh, you know, survive that sort of thing. Um, I've had experiences that I couldn't pay to have when I was in the Congo, I was in Pukabu, which is eastern Congo. <coughs> there was a lot of fighting going around, going on then. It was pretty dangerous. And I was staying at a hotel called the Lake Orchard Hotel. There's actually this house. It was 50 cents a night. Um, and I got there. And it really is like the Congo, when I arrived, I felt like very much like this is like Liberia, but this the same sense of, you know, wasted population after years of pointless war that was still going on and uh, the 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 climate was very similar like to Liberia. It was just all of this hopelessness, I thought. And I went to my hotel and I felt really like weirded out. I had taken um a um prop plane from Burundi and I've been cha I mean I've been changing all day. It was total ridiculousness. And I get to my hotel, it's late that night, and it's, uh, it's this, it used to be a grand house, but it was now this shabby, like, <coughs> there were marauding gangs outside shooting. And I get to the front desk, um, <laughs> and the guy was like, yeah, here's your key, and I was the only guest at the hotel. <laughs> and it's this rambling, they call it a compound, but there are no gates or any, anybody can come in. And I go on the round the back to where my room is, and it's this room where the door lock is broken, so you just push the door open. And I'm like, this is the most unsafe thing I've ever, and I was totally freaked out. I was like, I can't, this is ridiculous. I'm in like one of the worst places in the world. And so I go back to the front desk where the um, the um, manager is, and I was like, um, I don't feel safe. Like, anybody can walk into my room and lock it. And he looks at me and he was like, okay, wait here. And he goes, <laughs> And he comes back with a German Shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave me the German Shepherd. And he was like, you can have the dog. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> but the dog stayed with me. I was there for two weeks. And the dog slept with me every night. <laughs> <coughs> His name was Rex. <laughs> and I felt a lot safer with Rex um, lying on the bed with me. And um, the whole while I was in the Congo, I mean, I had Rex. <coughs> and then when it was time to leave, I, the UN had said that I could catch a hitch a ride on this helicopter. Um, this helicopter of theirs that was going to Rwanda to Kigali from Kukabu, leaving at like 11 o'clock. My flight to Nairobi from Kigali left at um, at 5 o'clock. And so it was just going to be like a one hour helicopter ride, and then I'd be in Kigali and I could catch my Ethiopian Airs flight out of the con. I was so ready to get out of there by then. <laughs> Um, and so I was interviewing, um, I was in an interview at this village when the UN woman comes running and she's like, well, there's a problem, they've canceled the helicopter. Um, and there's no way out of Congo other than that helicopter. I don't know, I had gotten in there by hook or by crook on this, like, chart, not a charter, but I hitched a ride on a prop plane with some mercenary type. Um, and I'm like, oh my God, I've got to get out of here. You know, how am I? And she was like, the next helicopter will be leaving like 10 days. <laughs> <coughs> and she was like, there's one other option. We have an SUV. Uh, you can drive to Kigali if you want. It's five hours. And you can leave the SUV at the airport, and the UN people there will pick it up. And I was like, you want me to drive myself from Congo to Rwanda? <laughs> and she was like, if you want to get out. So they gave me their SUV, and I go racing to the border. It's like 11.30 now. My flight is at 5. And 
I get to the border and they're messing around and you know just messing with you and finally I get over the border and then it's like we're not talking highway we're talking you're in like you know you're in Central East Africa there are dirt roads and it's just there are no signs that say Kigali you know Interstate Five or anything like that so I'm stopping people on the road I'm barreling down this white SUV um, and I stop on the side of the road and say Kigali and like somebody will point and go down this way. And Rwanda, and that was the only time I've ever been to Rwanda. This was in 2005, so it was way after the genocide, but it's really manicured. And that was weird, because all I knew about Rwanda was genocide, but it looks almost like Ireland. It wasn't, Congo is like a mess. And then Rwanda looked really just, it was weird. They had these like crosses on corners that today, you know, people were mass murdered here, and, and it's just, it was such a weird, but I couldn't even focus on it, because I was so hell-bent on trying to get to Bugali. Uh, I finally get there at like five minutes to five, right? And I'm hurtling and I have my backpack and my laptop bag. It's like flapping against me. I go barreling into the airport and it's completely empty. <coughs> There's nobody out there. And I was like, it's an airport. How can it be completely empty? <coughs> and finally I see like a janitor <coughs> around the corner. And I was like, can it be an airway? And he looks at me and he's like, mm. And then he's like, I was like, is it still here at least? And he's like, come with me. So we go around another corner and he sees a security guard and he says Ethiopian Airways and the security guard gets his walkie-talkie and starts talking to the walkie-talkie excitedly. And then he's like, come, come. And he goes running and I'm running after him. We run through the airport and out onto the tarmac and there's the Ethiopian Airways plane. It had already turned around and had just was revving up to go down the, up the, the <laughs> runway, and we're like, running <laughs> <laughs> our bags like this, right, via the security guard. And um, the plane starts taking off, and then it stopped. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> the plane stopped, and I'm <coughs> running like this. And then they drive the little truck with the stair up, and they open the door, and the flight attendant had an afro. I still remember, it's so clear in my head, and she steps out with her ass and she opens the door, and she has this big, beautiful smile on her face, and they push the stair up, and I go running, and I burst into the plane, and I was like, I love you! I love you! <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, and they're all, everybody in the plane starts clapping, like that, and it's like, I, that, that was one of the most frantic days of my life, but I will remember that forever, because it was so, yeah, because I got out, I'm happy. <laughs> but, so, and it's stuff like that. There are like a million of those types of things that make, that, that that's what makes it, it makes it so fun. You know, at the end of the day, the job is just fun, man. It's like you're doing different stuff, and you're getting to see and meet different people. And that's what I meant when we're talking about the shades of gray. It's like they're all bringing their own stuff to the table, and it just makes it, it makes you appreciate what you have more. It makes me, I'm always happy when I come home again. I'm happy to be in my house and oh, this is really nice. But I'm always happy. I'm also happy to go out again because there's all this stuff happening out there that, you know, I want to see. That's my favorite part of the job. It's just getting out and seeing things.